Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. I don't always make videos like the one I'm making right now. Uh, it's less driven by subjects in the Bachelor world and more about the sort of subjects in my world. But I think you might want to listen if you care a little bit about what's going on. Uh, not necessarily with my mental health. Uh, from a state of the Dave, things are great. We've got a healthy 14-week-old baby and so much great, beautiful stuff is going on in our life. But with that comes the negative side of social media. So the selfish reason for this video is to let my audience, my supporters, and my uh, the people that consume my content to know the boundaries that I'm setting within, uh, within the world I exist in. Uh, I can't control other people, but I can control how I react to things. So uh, with that, I wanted to talk about hate that exists out there. When you when your channel starts to grow, you learn a lot about yourself and a lot about uh, human dynamics. I've had to learn who are my friends within the Bachelor community and who might use me for whatever sort of goodwill I can bring with my audience. I've had to learn that some people cannot be negotiated with and some people are just going to hate, right? Haters going to hate. That's what they say. Uh, but, you know, we don't always have to feed that. Um, I've only blocked less than a dozen people across all platforms. And I, I have several hundred thousand followers and subscribers when you factor in the different platforms that exist. I really prefer not to do that. But I think my reasons for preferring not to block people um, don't really live up to the modern world we live in. So I'm trying to actually embrace getting better at cutting people out of my life the way I would a stand-up show. So a stand-up comedy, every once in a while you get a heckler. You get someone who says something from the audience. In most cases, the heckler means well, and they aren't being mean with their heckle. They might just say something that was not warranted. You respond, everyone laughs, blah, blah, blah. But in some cases, and usually it's always because of alcohol, um, they need to be kicked out. And you just have to do that. And you say, you got to go. And you have to kick them out because they're actually taking away from everyone else who's a part of the show. Now, you might say, Dave, by addressing this right now, doesn't it take away from other content? Well, not really, because there's nothing else to talk about. Trust me, if there was a more interesting video to make right now, I wouldn't be making the video that I'm making. But the reason it says enough is enough is because I'm going to pleasantly ask my audience that appreciates me to not engage with the haters, just don't react, don't follow, but most importantly, don't bring it home to me. So what happened yesterday, and by the way, I'm using this example because the person who sent me this message knows I value them so much. There's a lot of great people that have sent me messages that have said things like, hey, Dave, did you know that so-and-so's talking about you right now on their Instagram page or their podcast or whatever? And my response to that is, I don't need to know what someone else thinks of me is none of my business. So this is my way collectively of rallying my audience around and saying, please don't share that with me. So to take someone, for example, imagine Caitlin Bristow. I've built up a good friendship with Caitlin Bristow. If there's a Reddit thread about Caitlin Bristow and why she's, uh, I don't know, not a great person, or, you know, not my opinion, but if someone says that, the last thing I would ever want to do is text Caitlin and be like, oh, they're talking mad trash to you right now. Because what happens is, and I can tell you a specific example last month when I was surprised to find a, I guess, former friend of mine was very unhappy with me. I did not go on my Instagram to find that out. It was sent to me by other people, a lot of people. Um, yesterday, after I blocked an account that's completely unhinged, I got an email from someone saying, oh, this person's talking trash about you. I just don't need to know. Um, there are people that are so far away from uh, people I want to have discussions with. I want nothing to do with them. I wish them all the best in life, but what a weird year it's been. From the harassment lawsuit, that of course we were absolutely not guilty of, uh, to, yeah, like people calling me out and some random growth happening that leads to more haters. Look, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm here to share my opinion. There are other channels that deal with statistics or non-opinionated things, you know, channels that might just recap the show. We cover social issues, whether it be within the Bachelor world or other entertainment worlds or even political, and nothing 
brings out the worst in humanity, like sharing your opinion. I couldn't imagine what it would be like to be a female content creator because I'm sure y'all get it way worse. I'm not saying this to play victim. I'm just letting folks know it is nasty out there. So on Instagram, I've started making a little bit more videos that may dive into topics of politics, topics of culture, but by no means do I feel like I'm pouring gasoline on a fire. I'm just a guy sharing my opinion. My channel has grown from some of those videos, but to be quite fair, my Instagram channel has also grown from videos that had nothing controversial whatsoever. In fact, the biggest video that I had, and I'm and I'm bringing this up because people have said, "Oh, Dave, you're only growing your content because you know of what you know of the things you're covering." One of the biggest videos that I made recently was me sharing a skincare routine. And by the way, here's a 1.5 million view video of me talking about breast milk. Uh, but yeah, I was sharing my uh, skincare routine a few weeks back and that video went super viral and probably got me more views than any other content out there. This video is 3.8 million views. That's more than every other video I've ever made combined on Instagram, right? So I say that because the internet is eclectic. People will follow for different reasons. Some might follow because they want to tell you you shouldn't put coconut oil on your face. Works fine for me. Maybe it'll cause you to break out. I don't know. And then other people might follow you because you have the most beautiful sun that was ever created. Very true. Very true. And then some people might follow you because not that they agree with you politically, but they know you're telling your truth. And that's what I want from people. And I can't tell you why to follow me, but I want people to understand I'm not bought and paid for by anyone. My business model is you get ads on your end. I've been accused, and it's so far, I can't not smile when I say this, I've been accused of being a political shill, being paid for by the Democratic Party. I'm very critical of the Democratic Party. You might be surprised to hear that. Um, I, I believe they have uh, uh, colluded to keep people from running in primaries and things like that. Absolutely. I've also been crit critical of the Republican Party, particularly the one hijacked by MAGA man himself, Donald Trump. That party, most people, most people in that party do not like Donald Trump, and yet they remain silent and complicit because they think that that is their winning ticket to, I guess, uh, you know, whatever policies they they endorse. So I bring this all up to say, please, as we grow in size, let's remember to not mind what other people have to say about us. If anything, if you enjoy me and you see someone posting things about me that you don't like, the best thing you can do is block and unfollow them. Let them know our audience, because look, I've, I've, I've struggled with this in the past with certain haters where I go, my audience is so much bigger than theirs that it does a disservice for me to even address who that person is. And I still stand by that. They are not worth my time. But like I said, it's so easy for people to say, Dave, tune it out. I'm telling you right now, whenever something goes down, you get messages in your inbox from quote unquote fans that think they're doing the right thing. And I get it. They're like, all right, I can tell Dave this. Don't, just don't do it. And you don't have to apologize for it either. Everyone's done it. Literally everyone. Um, I, I can't not, like when, when, the, when the thing happened with my friend, uh, Reality Steve was the one who texted me. I'm not gonna tell Reality Steve not to text me when, when I'm being tagged and called out online. Like clearly that's gonna make its way to me. That example was probably the biggest call out that, anyone I consider my friend will ever do to me. I don't think I'll ever receive anything like that ever again. I truly don't because it's never happened before and I don't expect it'll happen again based on the, you know, sort of the ways I try to live my life. Um, so anyway, with all of that said, I wanted to share what Caitlin Bristow had to say. She said, I've got to be honest. I am really struggling with my relationship with social media. I've posted once in the last two weeks and my followers drop like crazy. Why does that hurt my feelings? Silly, I know. And on the other hand, if I force myself to come up with scheduled content to monetize all the time for growth, it gives me anxiety. It feels like a suck hole. It also takes away precious mo memories that mean the most while just being in the moment. I thought about, thought about tossing my phone in the ocean this week because being off it more than usually caused, um, Spoiler alert, bliss. I love you guys so much because I know you just want me to show up authentically. So that's what I will continue to do. Okay, going to go get sand out of places it shouldn't be all the best. Bye. Now, so here's what's interesting. Like, I I, I truly mean this. I love the vibes that Caitlin Bristow gives because she 
explains to us what so many people are feeling. So many people in the comment section shared their opinions, people that are famous and influencers and this and that. And look, I'm sure Caitlin, if given the choice 100 times out of 100, wouldn't change the opportunities that have come from social media. But dang it, if she's not entitled to try her best to set those boundaries. We actually spoke with Dear Shandy a f uh, last month. I did a really great podcast with them. One of the best I think I've probably ever done, considering how great they are at asking awesome questions. Uh, and we discussed the fact that commenting and feeding your haters uh, you know, uh, uh, Andy actually said he thinks I'm above that. And I agree. It's, it's, it's like saying scratching poison Ivy will make it worse. Don't scratch poison Ivy. And you go, well, I just skipped through a field of poison Ivy. I'm going to scratch the hell out of it. There is something that certain personality types like Caitlin and myself have that makes it very hard to do that. But that's why it's a daily practice. Now, yesterday when I was receiving some of the unwarranted hate, um, some days you shed it off and other days you don't. I received a little bit extra yesterday um, from someone, I guess, not, not enjoying the quality of my content. And it was so frustrating as a guy, as a dad, that's got a 14-week-old baby, you know. Everyone who's watching this on my Patreon, the Patreon section, patreon.com slash Dave Neal, they watch these behind the scene live. They know, I mean, anyone who's been a parent knows how hard it is uh, to have a baby. To and, and, and by the way, way harder on the mom, the woman, my wife's breastfeeding eight hours a day, it feels like, probably, right? Uh, so much harder. And at the same time, I'm still a human trying to, operate off of less than optimal sleep. Uh, with that said, I don't get paternity leave. I don't get, um, you know, a day off. If I want it, I'll try to take it. But you guys know me. I try to work hard and provide for my family. So it's a matter of coping with doing the positives, cutting out the negatives. And if that means I no longer read any comments, sure. But people will still email you these hateful things. Here's what um, Charlene had to say. Andy like, always tells me that uh, you know you're doing something right when the haters are coming after you. Exactly. It means that you're growing enough you, you to should, appeal to enough people that there are people to hate you. To me, the right thing to do, and I, I, I respect and I admire the fact that you come at these people. Mm -hmm. we, we don't do that. Yeah. And I always, every time you do, I'm like, wow. It's I almost like to. I'm eating popcorn watching you. And which is interesting was the last thing that happened. I know what you're talking about. I was like, oh, oh I what's don't actually Dave? know. Is it okay for... I don't do, know who do you, you're talking I, I about. I don't want to really change the subject. Oh, so then they got into things we don't need to get into right now, but you can go watch the episode. But yeah, I, I appreciated that they enjoy the train wreck, but think that it's harmful. So you, so again, you might say, Dave, well, in this video, aren't you feeding in the haters? No, I'm just telling my supporters. The best thing you can do is unfollow and block the people that might be haters, and then we can exist in a world where we get it. You know, and also... You know, I actually haven't mentioned this once on a YouTube video because I've been mentioning it every day on the Rush Hour podcast. We've got our 24, maybe 25 teacher wish list. Please, by all means, link in the comment section below. If you haven't given to one of our teachers, please do. I wanted to mention that in a video that might be getting views from our fan base just to let you guys know, yes, we are doing the teacher wish list. And I would much rather have a army of people that get what we do. Again, not an echo chamber. You can have rightful criticisms. I'm talking about the people that, let, let me tell you something. When I've blocked somebody, I have given them every chance in the world to redeem themselves. Every one of my moderators will tell you the same thing. I've given them every single chance to redeem themselves. I've said, look, don't mention things that involve my family. Don't come out, you know, like don't, you know, uh, whatever. And then and then they continue to cross the line. I say, okay, well, I would be an idiot if I didn't block you right now. So, as I get bigger and grow, I'll probably just get more comfortable using that feature. Um, you know, what's interesting is the main reason why I never wanted to use it is I never wanted to be that guy who someone says, oh, Dave Neal blocked me from so-and-so. And now it's just like, I, I almost want to treat it like a like shushing a mosquito away, like block, 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 block. Like it doesn't matter. Um, and just being okay with it and knowing there's enough people and enough capture out there from audience that is operating in good faith. Again, not people that necessarily agree with me because plenty don't, but you don't have to be an asshole about it. And, uh, and we don't need to tolerate that. So when I spoke to Caitlin, um, actually speaking of the devil, when I spoke to her on Driving with Dave, uh, which is about a year ago. Oh my gosh. No, not quite a year ago. It was only in November, huh? 2023. Wow. It feels like a lot longer than that. 
um, we spoke about uh, the fact that, and by the way, when I spoke to Caitlin, it was after she had to deal with a serious sort of troll issue where she was getting in the thick of things. There was an Instagram, there was a Reddit thread recently saying, I don't get why people don't like Caitlin. Every, every person who's met her has had nice things to say. And that's the truth. She is a great, fantastic person. I mean, look, I got four, th four bottles of wine right over there with a handwritten letter from her. She had one of her employees drop it off to me. Um, you know, she's constantly has, is doing something nice and supportive. Um, and yet at the same time, you know, when you get an audience at her size, you can't always respond to everybody. I mean, imagine this. Imagine if someone comes up to me in public and says, Dave, I'm a big fan or I watch your show. Can we take a photo? Absolutely. Now, if 30 people did that in a day, would I take 30 photos? Yeah, I think I would. Now, if 500 people did that every day, would I take? No. At some point, and I'm, I'm not there, but at some point you really, you, you reach a size where you say, look, I'm out with my family. I can't take one photo because then it, people are going to think it's an open invite for everyone to get a photo. And then they pull, pull, pull from you. And that's something I don't have to deal with, but someone like Caitlin might. So when people say, oh, how was she in person? And everyone says, oh, she was great. Trust me. That comes with a lot of energy spent. Here's what she had to say about dealing with the trolls. And I'm sometimes getting a little bit lost in that thought, which I need to stop doing because I go through phases where if I'm like in a darker place and going through a harder time the noise and the hate affects me so much more than if I'm in a good place but that makes so much sense because these trolls and the noise it's because they're in a dark place so misery loves company I go looking for it I feel it more because it's almost validating all my insecurities and they're the insecure ones trying to attack me. You know, it's just a nasty little circle. And this happens with influencers and people like Caitlin because she is successful. She does have a lot of great things going after her. And it just gives the haters, I guess, a green light to tell them how they to tell her how they feel. I would love it if Caitlin took things into her own hands and did a little troll patrol. We discussed it. It'll never happen. Uh, but here's what she had to say. Me either, but... If that, if these trolls that were talking to me the way they are came out to me, do you know what? I'm crazy. I have- We know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a photo album of trolls if they have a profile picture. Stop it. And I like, <laughs> sometimes before I go to an airport or like go somewhere, I'll like look at these people's faces. And if they ever come up to me and ask for a photo, I'm gonna say, you don't That's think so I know funny. who you are? It's so funny. That would never happen because the trolls, they don't do that. They're, they're not coming up in person and being that type of person because we don't act that way in real life. Uh, so I guess to end with what I started with, if I can't control other people, how do I control my reaction? Training the mind to know that these things said online aren't real. They're not real people. Even if there's a real person on the other end saying it, the translation between them being real typing something shitty out and me reading it that translation means it's not real because we just wouldn't act that way so what's what what can i say to make this video productive i can say this please again my own boundary being set let me live a little bit of a blissful life i'll continue to give you my honest opinion about things you can consume it or not but if anyone else has a problem with me just remember it's none of my business if you are offended by their problem hit the unfollow with me let's just move into a world where we treat each other with a morsel of respect wouldn't we like that all right i'll have more content this afternoon on the rush hour podcast you can go catch that anywhere you listen to podcasts thank you guys so much we'll see you then